Within Warhammer 40k, all individuals that wield significant power, such as a space marine, confront a pivotal choice between doing good or causing harm. Now engineered as formidable warriors from adolescence, space marines are the pinnacle defenders of humanity. Armed with the Imperium's most advanced technology, their bodies are shielded against enemy weaponry while their minds are fortified through rigorous conditioning. They eradicate fear, pain, and temptation. Embracing the mantle of an Astarte entails relinquishing personal ambition in service to the Emperor of Mankind and Mankind itself, an unyielding dedication that persists indefinitely. However, when a space marine strays from the path of loyalty and descends into chaos, it can be extremely profound. Freed from the constraints of discipline and responsibility, they may indulge in unchecked violence and hedonism, their once restrained desires unleashed without remorse throughout the galaxy. Some descend into renegade warfare, while others delve into forbidden knowledge to seek extreme sensations, reveling in the newfound sensations of power and liberation. This allure of chaos, though acknowledged and warned against by the teachings of the chapter and the chaplains, presents a constant temptation to even the most steadfast space marines. Resisting this temptation sometimes proves impossible as they grapple with the conflicting pulls of duty and their desire. Their struggle is enigmatic to the eternal battle between loyalty and corruption within the heart of humanity. That's why there's the tag of beware the enemy within. And that's why today we're going to talk about some of the most famous traitors within Imperial history. Starting off with Brother Nylon. Brother Nylon was a young space marine librarian of the Valiant Salamanders chapter. He studied under the famed chief librarian Valcona, and at first it seemed like this young battle brother would thrive within the chapter. Nylon was unique amongst his fellow neophytes as his psychic powers grew rather quickly, and with this increase in abilities came the temptations of power. He continued to progress in his physical and mental training, However, Nylon was continually caught delving into forbidden knowledge of the warp in order to strengthen his own psychic abilities. Velcona tried the best to correct the young librarian on various occasions, but his thirst for power was clearly leading him down the wrong path. With great sorrow, the chief librarian made the decision to end Nylon's life, fearing that his heretical tendencies would endanger the first founding chapter. Nylon was shackled with a null collar, preventing the librarian from utilizing his psychic powers ever again and then was left for dead inside the ruins of the world of Lycanor. Infuriated by this betrayal, enacted by the same battle brother that was supposed to be his mentor, Nylon allowed himself to fully accept the powers of chaos and turn from the light of the Emperor of Mankind. He repudiated his oath to both his lineage and his chapter, becoming a servant to the Chaos Gods. Nylon's life wouldn't end on Lycanor, through the grace of his new Chaos Masters, Nylon escaped the planet and soon joined the demagogue, Vaitanu Shorak, the insane former chaplain of the Black Dragon's chapter who had also turned renegade. It is unknown what promise Ushorak made to Nylon or what bargain was struck, but the renegade salamander librarian swore fealty to the former Black Dragon's cause and eagerly followed his new master. Eventually, a strike force composed of the Salamander's Third Company, under the command of Captain Kotanka Day, caught up to the deranged chaplain and his renegades on the cemetery world of Morabar. While Ushorak delved into the secret crypts beneath the sepulchre world, the salamanders and the renegade followers of Ushorak fought savagely through the crematoriums of the ash-blanketed world. At the height of the fighting, Ushorak was plunged into the central furnace at the heart of the planet, and Librarian Nylon tried to save the former chaplain, but failed and was horribly burned in the process, barely surviving his horrific wounds. From the tattered remnants of Ushorok's followers, the newly christened Chaos Sorcerer Nylon formed the Dragon Warrior Chaos Space Marine Warband. Determined to enact vengeance against the Salamanders and the people of Nocturne, Captain Cadet sealed his fate as the vengeful Nylon proceeded to engineer the heroic Salamander's downfall as revenge for his own horrific wounds. Nylon would forever carry large amounts of scarring on his onyx-colored skin from the incident. To cover it up, he wore power armor the color of split crimson blood, with long, curving horns that arced from each shoulder plate. The armor appeared as if adorned with dragon scales, and possessed unholy talismans in the sigil of chaos, dangling from chains blackened from fire. The dragon warriors under Nylon's control were composed of mercenaries, renegade space marines, and various xenos. He also possessed a chaos cruiser called the Hellstalker, that served as his mobile base of operation and the flagship of his motley fleet. The Hellstalker possessed an enormous seismic cannon, and he also had in his possession an ancient Stormbird dropship that he used to descend to the surface of a planet. 
There was this military force that Nylan used to orchestrate the Chaos Cult uprising of the Cult of Truth and the mining world of Stratos. The revolt was simply a distraction, while the Chaos Sorcerer secretly recovered the artifact known as the Decipherax from the depths of the planet's floating city. The Salamanders responded to Stratos' astropathic distress call, and Nylan was prepared for such a counterattack. In an act of strategic superiority, the Chaos Sorcerer sprung his trap to kill Captain Kotan Kadeh, finally getting revenge against the warrior that gave Nylan his scars. After the successful murder of Kadeh, Nylan enlisted a warband of iron warriors to mine for a special ore known as Phyron from the world of Scoria. It was during this time that the Chaos Sorcerer entered into a demonic pact with a demon Engelsack in order to enhance his already formidable psychic powers. The demon told Nylan of a forbidden tome that possessed the fell knowledge of the ancient Nocturnian corpse masters that had the ability to resurrect the dead. With this formidable knowledge, Nylan hoped to resurrect his former master. In return for the demon's knowledge and the enhancement of powers, the Chaos Sorcerer provided the demon a host body, enabling him to enter the material realm as a demon host and wreak havoc on the Salamander's chapter. It was during this conflict that Nylan revealed his nefarious plan. Utilizing a seismic cannon, he created a shaft that delved deep into the Mount Deathfire, the sacred mountain of the Salamanders on Nocturne. Within the mountain, the Chaos Sorcerer was able to breach the hidden sacred shrine that contained one of the lost books of the Primarch Vulcan, known as the Tome of Fire. The Chaos Sorcerer was confronted by the Salamander Epistolary Pyrell, his fellow former neophyte in training. He defeated him in a psychic battle that resulted in the Salamander's death. Pyrell's sacrifice was not in vain, as Chief Librarian Valcona arrived to face his former pupil before he could make good of his escape. The Chief Librarian and the Chaos Sorcerer battled within Mount Deathfire, but unfortunately for the Salamanders, Nylan was able to escape thanks to the timely intervention of his personal bodyguards, known as the Glaive. With the Chaos Sorcerer gone, his intentions are still to resurrect his former master, and Nylan's current whereabouts are completely unknown to the Salamanders. Now let's move on to Korn as we talk about Cranon the Relentless. Before he was Cranon the Relentless, the Chaos Lord was a loyalist Astarte named Sevastus Cranon. Cranon's superb military mind elevated him to the position of Chapter Master of the Crimson Saber Space Marine Chapter. Under his command, the Chapter won great accolades, crushing whole worlds in the name of the Emperor. However, his brutal manner earned the Crimson Sabers a dark reputation in the bordered Imperium. His savagery would lead to the eventual excommunication of the Crimson Sabers, and it all began on the jungle world of Umidia, where the chapter conducted a genocide purge of the Balthu cults. Subsequent interrogation of the captured Crimson Sabers revealed that the Chaos Cult of the planet were in the process of summoning a demon of corn, and in their rush of judgment, the Crimson Sabers purged the entire planet of life, men, women, and children. As an act of revenge or possibly reward for the bloody annihilation of his followers, Korn cursed the Crimson Sabers to be haunted by the voices of all those that they had just slain. The entire chapter was literally haunted by the butchery of their action. Poltergeist activity surrounded the Crimson Sabers wherever they went, and it became known as the mysterious Balthew. Whenever a space marine closed his eyes, he would see the faces of those he had killed and hear their screams in his mind. Sleep became impossible, and slowly at first, a pall of paranoid insanity spread throughout the chapter like a disease. This led the Crimson Sabers to being declared renegades by the Inquisition and the High Lords of Terra, due to the signs of continued psychological instability that the Astartes of the chapter displayed, and to add to that, their continued overzealot persecutions of their campaigns. In an attempt to burn away the harrowing memories and the fires of war, Chapter Master Cranon declared the neighboring world of Demetra, tainted by the proximity of Umidia, and the killing began anew. The desperate plan worked, for the specters of Balthew were drowned out by the series of gore-drenched battles. Subsequent bloodshed could silence the voices, but only for a short time. Cranon then led his warriors into the Eye of Terror to slaughter traitors instead of spilling the blood of Imperial innocents, thereby gaining a temporary respite. Self-exiled into the Eye of Terror, the Crimson Sabers were blessed with many gifts by the ruinous powers to further their combat prowess. They were finally fully corrupted by Chaos and remade themselves as the warband of the Chaos Space Marines called the Crimson Slaughter. Sevastus Cranon was reborn as the Chaos Lord and Champion of Korn named Cranon the Relentless. Here he learned of the mysterious chaotic artifact known as the Hellfire Stone 
an altar dedicated to Korn that could forever free his Astartes from the curse and silence the voices in their head once and for all. It was said that once this artifact was anointed with the blood of a space marine, the Hellfire Stone would open a doorway into the warp and allow a powerful demon to pass through into real space. Joining forces with warbands drawn from the traitor legions during the 13th Black Crusade, Cranon and the Crimson Slaughter began their rampage across multiple Imperial worlds in a relentless search for the Hellfire Stone. Carving a bloody swath across a dozen or more populated worlds that dotted the southern rim of the galaxy, the Crimson Slaughter overwhelmed Imperial garrisons and slaughtered whole populations before vanishing back into the warp. Although their rebellion against the Imperium had been well documented, if subsequently suppressed by the Order of the Inquisition, the remote nature of the planets they attacked meant that by the time the distress call was answered, the Crimson Slaughter had long departed. This remained true until the Crimson Slaughter made the mistake of engaging the Dark Angels' fifth company in a battle upon the world of Stern's Remembrance, slaying many battle brothers, including the fifth company's master. Such an act of violence earned the undying wrath of the Dark Angels and the newly ascended fifth company master, Balthazar, who swore to hunt down those responsible for his predecessor's death and bring their heads back to the rock, the space-born fortress monastery of the Dark Angels. The 5th Company was also accompanied in their task by members of the Dark Angels Elite 1st Company, the Death Wing, members of the 2nd Company, the Raven Wing, and a powerful librarian named Termail, who had been trained by Ezekiel, the chief librarians of the Dark Angels. Eventually, Cranon the Relentless finally found the Hellfire Stone on the world of Bane's Landing. Unfortunately, he was confronted by the Dark Angels 5th Company. Cranon intended to use the Hellfire Stone to summon forth his demonic masters and usher in a new age of darkness. During the battle that followed, he claimed the lives of several Dark Angels and took the Raven Wing Sergeant Arion prisoner for use in rituals. However, Arion's suicide thwarted his plan and he was forced to retreat. Luckily, Balthasar did manage to corner Cranon, and a great battle was fought between the two, but the Chaos Lord was able to teleport away. The Hellfire Stone disappeared from the planet and would not reappear for another 40 years. Following this battle, Cranon would suspect that he and his chapter were being used by an unknown power. This power turned out to be one of Zinch's Lord of Change, who had been possessing the body of the former chief librarian Manon. Cranon would pursue Manon deep into the Eye of Terror to a world called Mimadrax. There he would cut the demon's arm off before it retreated yet again. Still being pursued by the Dark Angels, Librarian Tourmail would predict that over the course of the next three years, Cranon would join forces with much more powerful Chaos Lords and would be cornered on a moon in Tau space. The vision predicted that a combined effort of the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves would lead to a third battle between Balthazar and Cranon. Cranon would eventually meet his end and his head would be decapitated, taken back to the battle barge Angel of Retribution by Balthazar in an iron box. And yet it is unknown if this vision is true. The last we knew of Cranon was during the Dymore campaign and during the attack on Cadia during the 13th Black Crusade. And with that said, let's move on to a Zinchian Chaos Space Marine, a sorcerer by the name of Oberon the Undying. The Chaos Sorcerer Oberon the Undying was a former Imperial Fist battle brother who fell to the temptations of Chaos sometime during the early 36th millennium. His betrayal is a close guarded secret by the Stoic First Founding Chapter, and at this point, only the spoken accounts from the few Imperial Fist dreadnoughts with first hand accounts of his betrayal exist. These ancients tell the tragedy of the proud and powerful Oberon, whose prodigious power as a psyker drove him to mistrust his commanders and grow in his arrogance. Oberon excelled in the discipline of divination. His sight into the hidden web of fate that manipulated events yet to come allowed him to predict the paths of bullets and swords, making him almost impossible to strike down. These same powers allowed him to predict the enemy's action before they themselves knew what they were going to do like a master swordman that can read the swing of a sword by the body language of a foe oberon could see the actions of an entire military force before the commander gave out his orders cheered on by his brothers who admired his incredible skills in close combat and his godlike intuition oberon pushed for more and more control of the battlefield directing the battle brothers of his company at the opportune moment to catch the enemy at its weakest point oberon achieved victory after victory Unfortunately, it came with a terrible price, as the company captains and lieutenants were sidelined by the great librarian. Although they all had twice Oberon's experience, he treated these veterans with the same amount of respect as any other member of the company, and tensions quickly began to develop. Oberon didn't give counsel when his commanders asked. His warp-empowered insight was given as an order. In the mind of Oberon, victory was not good enough. 
complete battlefield supremacy was the greatness that every Astarte should strive for, and anyone settling for mediocre success was not fit to fight alongside him. The veteran warriors of his company tried warning Oberon of the dangers of relying too much on his powers. They tried making him understand the true value of a low-cost victory, but in his mind, measured actions were for lesser beings. It was during the pacification of the warp-tainted planet of Runshot that Oberon's diviner powers finally failed him. The librarian received a vision of a future where he marched at the head of the Imperial Fist and their successors during what he felt was the end times. In an instant, he was transported backwards through the web of fate as dozens of prophetic scenes played out, each one a stepping stone from that one first glorious vision, and it was the last prophetic vision which told him what to do next. Ignoring his captain's orders to hold for company reinforcements, Oberon sent his force into what he believed was a crippling spearhead assault, but instead, it was a perfectly orchestrated ambush by the Traitor Planetary Defense Force. Twenty-five Sons of Dorne, along with multiple engines of war, fell to the bombardment of the heretical humans. The shame he brought to the chapter could not go unpunished, but instead of accepting his failure, Oberon blamed the terrible loss on his battle brothers, claiming that it was their hesitation in his direction that caused their death, not his interpretation of fate. Before his punishment could be assigned, however, Oberon received another vision of a similar but not identical future from before. It was destined that he would lead the Sons of Dorne into their final battle, but in order to accomplish this, Oberon had to travel into the maelstrom of chaos. Never doubting his own powers, Oberon managed to evade capture and set course for the Eye of Terror. When his ship finally entered the stellar maelstrom, Oberon stood at the bridge of his vessel staring into the hellish void he was trained to fear, but amidst the chaos, his soul felt calm. Phantom images ghosted in and out of his perception, Demons attempted to coerce him into turning off his Gellerfield, but Oberon simply waited. And then suddenly, in a flash of pale blue light, the physical manifestation of fate itself appeared to Oberon. Taking the form of crackling blue energy that manifested as a shifting human face, it uttered the truth of the end times and what possible outcome may come from the apocalyptic battle. At that moment, Oberon knew without a doubt what role he must play in the long war. Accepting the bargain laid out before him, the once proud Imperial Fist Librarian gave himself over to chaos, and the etheric force entered his body, mutating everything inside. And finally we have the Chaos Space Marine Mahor the Harvester. Before Mahor fell to the service of the Blood God Korn, he was the captain of the third company of the Shadow Hawks Loyalist Space Marine chapter, and in the 39th millennium, after a 12-year campaign to eradicate the rebellious factions within the population of the hive world of Croak Morn, the third company of the Shadow Hawks were censured for their widespread culling of the population that marked the end of the campaign, but left the world unable to fulfill the production quota owed to the administratum. Rather than accept the dishonor of exile on a penitent crusade, Captain Mahor led the survivors of the Third Company in a series of raids on Imperial fleets and outposts in the Croak system before vanishing into the lightless void of the Halo Stars. The Halo Stars was the name given to the ancient formation of stars that encircled the outer edge of the Milky Way galaxy. It represented the last stellar cluster to be encountered before one enters the eternal frigid night of the intergalactic void. This region of space has a malignant reputation amongst the Imperial Starfarers, and it is believed by many, including quite a few rogue traders and Adeptus Mechanicus explorators, that those foolish enough to venture out into those mysterious reaches never return. And their beliefs have some credibility, as pirates, warp entities, and new species of hostile Xenos often dwell in the frontier's darkness. In this void, Mahor was able to allow his hatred of the Imperium to fester. It was unfathomable how Astarte warriors could allow themselves to be ruled over by the High Lords of Terra, such a weak and pathetic organization that has no true grasp of how much worthier a space marine is to rule over the galaxy. While man hides and fears the depths of the Halo Stars, Mahor and his battle brothers thrive, just further proof of the Astarte superiority. Surprisingly, the former Loyalist captain found several renegade warbands already existing in this region of space. They finally introduced Mahor to a being worthy of his following, entity so powerful his wrath has no complacency, Korn, the god of war. Inspired by the other warbands' rebellious nature and driven by his thirst for revenge against the weak Imperium, Mahor convinced these traitors to follow him on a path of retribution against those unfit to rule. There, Mahor finally succumbed to the temptations of the blood god Korn, and he became leader of the Slaughterkin Warband. The Imperium wouldn't take notice of Mahor again until the late 41st millennium, 
when the Adeptus Administratum Tithe Fleets arrived on the three worlds of the Hrydmaw Cluster, seeking the tally of lives and produce due to the Emperor as part of the Imperial Tithes. They found that each world was a wasteland. The headless corpses of each of the world's inhabitants lay abandoned, not slain in battle, but carefully harvested and their skulls piled in great towering obelisks. While attempting to demolish these foul monuments, the Slaughterkin Warband came down on the Imperial forces, who were led by Mahor, and soon the skulls of the Administratum factions and the Astra Militarum regiments assigned to their protection were offered in sacrifice to Korn atop the rebuilt obelisks. After this devastation, Mahor became known as the Harvester, and he sought to assault the agri-world of Karak in the Ultima Segmentum. He laid the seeds of rebellion by establishing a series of chaos cults. They were the so-called carnal cults from among the world's population of primitive agricultural workers who spent their lives harvesting the roots of the world's nutrient-rich trees. Their yield was processed into substance to support the Astra Militarum regiments engaged in the Carthog Crusade. The cult spread rapidly throughout the population and unleashed a massive rebellion against the imperial rule. It wasn't long before the world felt a complete anarchy and war. The ensuing conflict with the local planetary defense force and the Astra Militarum regiments was fought beneath the dense canopy of the swamp-like forests and in the air between the Imperial Navy pilots and the Hell Talons and Hellblades brought to the world by the Slaughterkin's arrival after the rebellion had severely weakened the Imperial defenders. The Imperial cause was further damaged when the corruption of chaos took many of the planetary defense force units as they turned to the worship of the ruinous powers. Once the Harvester took the planetary capital, the victory of the forces of chaos seemed assured. Deliverance only came when the 5th Battle Company of the Star Phantoms chapter of the Adeptus Astarte, under the command of Captain Calfax, arrived in system for resupply, and they launched an immediate and devastating attack upon the rebel stronghold, slaying the Harvester and driving the remaining traitor marines of the Slaughterkin back into the Halo Stars. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, more Chaos Space Marine videos in the future. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and we'll talk tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>